Hello, hello, it's your friend Double Bite, and I'm back um, with uh, finally doing like a PAX retrospective uh, for PAX Unplugged. So the reason I didn't upload anything the second two days was just because I was super busy. Uh, I was going to have to recap and like, kind of summarize. Uh, Friday I went to a bunch of panels. Um, my favorite one was the Art and Arcana Visual History of D&D panel. If you have a chance to check that book out, strongly recommend it. It's super neat. Um, I also went to the State of the Industry 2018. Which was like definitely drier, but it was interesting to see the difference from last year. How more publishers are kind of, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Considering Kickstarter as part of the whole process and not a competition, um, and I've definitely seen that more and more where Kickstarters are just as much of a marketing thing as a fundraising thing. That's pretty interesting. Um, I went to a third one, but I don't quite remember what that one was. Saturday was mostly um, window shopping and shopping with Burb. I got this awesome shirt from Geeks Out. I also got a rainbow Pokeball shirt and one of the um, the Space Packs and Plug shirt, which are actually both in the wash. So well, you'll see me wearing them at some point. That's a little forced. Hold on. Where my water at? I got no water. That's fine. I'll live. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't feel like I did in this video, so I'm not going to get get water. I don't have any water? Damn. Anyway, that was cool. And then, um, Sunday was playing a lot of games with my friend Stip, and getting some last minute shopping in. Unfortunately, out of the three games I wanted to buy on Saturday, on Sunday, two of them were out of stock. So, I ended up ordering them on Amazon, a lot cheaper, and I felt kind of weird about that, but whatever. Anyway, so I wanted to... Oh, and also Sunday I went to an amazing panel. I'm going to talk about that first. Um, it was by Mike Seliker, who designed, was one of the developers of um, Betrayal on the House of the Hill, which, as you may have heard in my rants, um, is one of my favorite games. And uh, he signed uh, my books. Which is very nice of him. Um, so the talk was I don't want to like I'm not going to reproduce the whole talk because you know it's his talk, but it was about fun and frustration, and more specifically, um, what is a puzzle? What is a game? And his definition of a game is something where when both sides are playing the same advantages, they have an equal chance of winning, and it's more symmetrical, even if it's an asymmetrical game. And a puzzle is when one side has all of the knowledge, but the other side is expected to win, right? Because you don't want a puzzle that you won't eventually solve. But in a game, if you're playing equal, equal, like equally good or equally well, you have a 50 50 chance of winning. But if you're trying to solve a puzzle, you expect to be able to solve the puzzle eventually, which is really neat. And then I also talked about puzzle like elements in games, and then talked about frustration in games where part of the enjoyment of games and puzzles especially is make the player frustrated up until the point where they would quit and then give them what they want um but so because it's way more satisfying that way talk about mechanics to increase frustration and valves to decrease frustration um i took a lot of screenshots of it but it was really interesting and i may do another video on it once i've had more time to think about it but and Mike Selick is just a great guy. He's really funny, very humble. Um, so yeah, that was a really good talk. But yeah, um, I also wanted to share some of my loot. So um, let's start. So I got the expansion to Spirit Island, um, which is one of my favorite games. I don't really get to play often because the setup time and play time is just a little bit too long for board game night. Sorry about that. <coughs> Verb is sick too. I really hope I'm not getting sick. I'm probably getting sick. Anyway, I'm excited for that. There's some cool things in there. Next up is Charterstone. It's a legacy game that's like a worker placement village creation game. 
Mm, phone? What's phone doing? Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna get water and turn off my phone. And I'm not gonna edit this video so you just have to wait like 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay, got water, I've got a cough drop, we are good to go. Anyway, so, it's a worker placement legacy game, where at the end of the 12 campaigns, you had this completed village, and it's your own kind of custom worker placement game that's dependent on the decisions you and the other players made. And the board is double-sided, so you can get, like, an expansion, like a refresh pack where you get another set of all the stickers and temporary components you can actually make a second village and have a second unique um worker placement game which is just such a cool concept i really wanted to check it out and it got decent reviews all right so next up we got some cool pins we got a beholder d20 and a gay meeple so on brand. Next up, there was these were these decks. I'm holding one now. Uh, focus, yeah. So there's side quest decks and NPC decks, which is already a cool idea. But what I want to do is run pick up D and D games, where I just like deal out an NPC to each player. I'm like, okay, here's your character. Here's the quest, go. So that'd be really cool. There's like I like ways of doing experimental ways of doing D and D, especially in shorter time spans and with variable groups of people. So yeah. I got this game Witching Hour. Just as a cute game. It's a small, cheap, um two to five people, which is nice. And I'm trying to get more games that are more than four people. Um takes 30 minutes, and I just thought it would be fun to play with Verb, if not someone else. And last, but definitely not least. So, it's a game I hadn't heard of. Um, but Stip saw it, and he's like, oh yeah, I played this, this is pretty good. Um, and I'm like, ooh, I want to try it, because it's by Don Lex Vaccarina, the um, guy who designed uh, Dominion, which is one of my favorite games of all time, because it's one of the best games of all time. When I'd heard about it, there's a lot of hype about it because, like, follow up to a legendary game is, like, really important. So I played it and instantly loved it. It's, like, interesting. It's really, it's very simple. Like, you can teach it very quickly. Um, doesn't scale that well with players, but, you know, can't have everything. But, and it's also a game that I think I can play with my parents. So I'm going to be doing some videos of that and videos of some other games I have, um, hopefully soon, once I figure out how to record um, a board game in a successful manner. And yeah. Oh, excuse me. I swear I got this came on all of a sudden. Um, I was not doing this before I started recording. Um. Waiting from Amazon are the games I wanted to purchase but sold out. Betrayal Legacy, which I'm super excited about. Um, and uh, Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. A friend of mine has Castles of Mad King Ludwig, which is like suburbia, but you're building a castle and it's way better. And also Between Two Cities, which is a game where you and the person next to you are cooperatively building a city. So you're building two cities. And then you get points at the end of the game for the worst of your the worst scoring of your two cities. And whoever has the best second best city wins. So it's kind of cooperative, kind of competitive, and it scales really well with any number of players, because you know, each person is only interacting with the people on their sides. 
So this looks like a fun crossover where you're not building a city collaboratively, but you're building a castle, and it doesn't overlap with my friend's game, so I thought that'd be really cool. Other board game news, I've been playing Race for the Galaxy in the app. Um, this is a Steam app that I've been playing with Stip and a aforementioned friend, we don't have a good nickname for yet, and Solo in this um, independent app. It's like independent, but it's approved by Rio Grande Games, but it's really good and really fucking hard against the AI. I'm going to try to do more board game content um, soon because I haven't really been playing any video games. And I've been playing a lot of board games, so, um, you know, my channel, I do what I want. Anyway, um, I need to go acquire food, but kind of in summary, PAX was awesome. Highly recommend if you're ever in Philadelphia, if you're in Philadelphia next year. Hopefully you'll be in Philadelphia again. Um, and, yeah. I have more thoughts, but I think it's good for summer. I'm already at 10 minutes, so I don't want to keep y'all. But um, until next time, double bite out.